Okay, we're on to chapter four, which is Flows and Networks 2. But I'm just calling it Flows and Networks A2 because this is only an A2 content. And basically, it totally builds on chapter three, except we now introduce the following three things that just adapt it. So the first thing that we introduce about these flows and networks is that the arcs can now have or probably will have minimum flows as well as the, the standard maximum flows that they have as well. And this is to help model things like pipes that must maintain water flow in cold weather to stop them freezing. So we're now saying that when you do a flow, uh, like a kind of a, um, an augmenting flow or like a flow pattern, that you need to make sure that all of the pipes will have to have a certain amount flowing through them. And that's going to be indicated by these numbers that are in the lower part of these brackets that we've got here. The second thing is that we might have networks where there are multiple sources and or multiple sinks. So kind of the water or the traffic is flowing out actually now of two locations rather than, rather than out of one single location. And it's very easy how to deal with those things that we've got there. And then last of all, the other adaptation that we have is that nodes or vertices may be given a restricted capacity rather than just arcs. So at the moment, we've al we've only said that a particular arc might have a restricted capacity, like here it's got a restricted capacity of five, but we might then say that a node actually might have a restricted capacity instead. And so basically the first exercise deals with this first point that we've got here, the second exercise deals with this second point, and the third exercise deals with this third point that we've got right here. So they kind of just follow a lot of logic. There's not really a ton of theory to do in this part. It all just should follow from the logic that we've done in chapter three. So it says here is a part of a capacitated directed network. Deduce the value of the flow in each arc. So we've now got this new part of the terminology here, that when you have two numbers, when they're in brackets looking like coordinates, the first bit is saying we have to have a minimum of three flowing through here, a minimum of three flowing through here, and a minimum of two flowing through here. We've then got the maximums as the five, the four, and the seven. And we do just need to use some logic for this. So it's a good idea to think about what's going in to be. Well, it's either something between three and five, but coming out of B, there is something between 3 and 2, which is 5, and 4 and 7, which is 11. So the minimum that is going to flow out of B is 5. Well, that's good because the maximum that can flow into B is also 5. So what we did here is we considered, we considered B and the flow in and out. So that must mean that the flow from B, C must be, we said, the minimum. From B, D, it must be the minimum. And from A, B, it must be the maximum. So B, C is 3. B, D is 2. And A, B is 5. It's the only way that will make that work. The minimum coming out uh, is the maximum that's going in. So we couldn't possibly have them going above the 3 and the 2 because we can only get 5 into that. So we're going to do an example where we calculate some flows and then in the next video we will do a separate one about calculating a maximum flow that we've got here. So we just did it for a small part of the diagram. We're now going to try and use this flow logic to think what the flows should be for this one. So by considering vert or by considering vertex C, calculate the flows in SC, BC and CG. So let's locate where C is that we've got here and we're going to try and do SC uh, B, C, and C, G. B, C, and C, G. I'm just going to kind of annotate some of this stuff on the diagram. So flowing into C that we've got here, we've got 2, 8, 4, 6, and then flowing out is 3, 6. So it looks like we've got a cap here. Only 6 can flow out, which means the ones that are flowing in have got to be their minimums. They have got to be the 2 and the 4 which means that the six has got to be flowing out for that particular part that we've got there. So I can jot these down, but actually I quite like underlining the things on the diagram because it helps me then visualize of what's going on for the next parts. So we've just said that SC is going to be two, BC has got to be four, and CG, because that's the part that's flowing out, that had to be the maximum because these minimums meant that we had to have six going in. It then says to explain why arcs DE, AE, and BE must all be at their lower capacities. So if we have a look at what is flowing out of E, we have the seven and 11 that we've got here. So the most that could be flowing out of E 
is seven is, is 11, which means that these have got to be at their lower capacities because four plus four plus three is 11. That's eight, nine, 10, 11 for that bit. So I'm just gonna explain that here. I'm gonna say the max flow out of E is 11, which means DE, AE, and BE's flows must sum to 11. This can only happen if they're at their lower capacities. This can only happen if they are at their lower capacities. So it then says, oh, so now we know this. Um, we know that they are at their lower capacity. So that was a four, a four, a three. And we know that this is now at the 11 that we've got here. It then wants us to calculate the flow in GT that we've got. So now let's have a look at GT. GT is this part. So this is the part I'm going to consider. Well, we know that six is going in and G can range between eight and 11. So if there was six going in and we wanted it to be eight, there would have to be two flowing in, but there can't be. There's got to be a minimum of five. So in order for there to be that maximum flow here of 11, because there's six here that we've already established, there would have to be five from this one. So there'd have to be five from this one, which means that GT has got to be 11. And if you needed to explain that, I'm not going to write this down. We could say because CG is flowing at a maximum of six and because GT has a maximum of 11, this means that BG's, sorry, this means that um, it cannot exceed 11. And this will occur because BG has a minimum of five. So we've got the minimum of five. The maximum of that six means that it has to be the 11 for that GT that we've got for that one. OK, so in the next video, we're going to be looking at an example of how we can actually calculate maximum flows where we slightly adapt our labeling procedure that we have looked at previously.